Beach will stay in prison for now. Last month, James Beach went before the parole board telling them he's a changed man and that he's sorry. He does admit in 2017 he punched a man so hard outside of a Las Vegas nightclub out on Fremont Street that it killed him. At, at the time, yeah, I, I, did have, uh, I did have issues with anger. And um, I see the, uh, the seriousness of uh, my actions. The victim's family say they are relieved by the parole board's decision to deny parole. Beach is eligible for parole again, though, next April. And Billy, Billy Idol, Idol has canceled his show at the Palms tonight. Flash! I almost said Billy Eilish. <laughs> Billy Idol. Now, in a statement, he says he has come down with a head cold. Tonight's show has been rescheduled for August 15th. And those with tickets can use some at that time, or you can also receive a refund. The rock icon plans to be back on stage Friday and Saturday. It's really just from one legend to another. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> All right, the time now is 5 or 6.09, uh, helping injured veterans in our valley. I came to the realization a year ago that if I didn't do something, I was going to end up in a wheelchair real soon. The CrossFit gym helping them gain physical and mental strength for free. And Coachella now postponed because of fears over the coronavirus when the music festival will now take place. So there's some light rain possible this morning, a little mist out there, a little drizzle. Looks like a stray shower is going to pop back up this afternoon, but the heavy rain moves in late Thursday, Thursday night through Friday. I'll show it to you hour by hour. We'll talk about potential rain amounts before the weekend gets here. We are going to have more wet weather on our hands. Our photographer Daryl in live drive for us this morning, just getting to the scene of an accident here. We'll have an update in just a couple minutes, but also just enough showers out there this morning to make the roads wet. You can see just a little bit of ponding there. Give yourself some extra time as you make your way out. Outside and it is a little damp outside, a little misty, according to uh, Justin Bruce. Yeah, let's check in with Justin over there. Uh, it's, looking, it's looking okay. I mean, it's hard. It's always hard to tell from those shots when yeah. it's still dark out what it's really doing. Mm -hmm. So you tell us what it's doing. We just Justin. see all the green on your map, so we know something's going on. I could, couldn't have said it better myself, ladies. Yeah, a little, little damp out there on our Wednesday morning, but not as wet as it was this time yesterday morning when it was actively raining. Uh, so that's a little bit of good news. Nevertheless, still a 13 first alert action day just because the streets are still a, a bit slippery uh, early today. 55 at McCarran, 52 at the Henderson Executive Airport. We'll keep those temperatures in the mid 50s so you can have that extra cup of hot coffee or hot tea. You'll want that little uh, extra boost of energy to keep attention to the roads this morning. Here's some good news. By the mid afternoon, we're about six degrees milder than it was yesterday. So we are headed into the mid 60s. And there'll be a couple of peaks of blue sky uh, through the cloud cover as the day wears on. This morning, though, those clouds are pretty thick, thick enough that there's a little mist from time to time. A couple of light showers here or there. Still some light showers falling down around Searchlight right now and you can see some of these showers flaring up over the McCullough range. Nothing heavy, but in some of the neighborhoods around Henderson, like along the 215 near Gibson near the 95 little damp and we can't rule out a stray light shower across the rest of the valley as you leave the house. So you may need the intermittent windshield wipers every once in a while. Getting into the afternoon though, hey, not a washout. Uh, it looks like there could be a stray shower as the day wears on. It could form over the mountain and drift across parts of town like Summerlin or Centennial Hills. But that chance later today uh, on the low side. It does look completely dry tomorrow morning through tomorrow early afternoon. After that, late Thursday, here comes our next round of heavy rain. And this one, so it could be a bit of a doozy. We think we could pick up an additional half inch or so of rainfall late Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, Thursday night into Friday morning. So we'll have to watch for the potential for a little bit of street flooding here in Las Vegas late Thursday through Friday. Now there's an actual flash flood watch posted for that stretch for Boulder City, for Lake Mead, for Laughlin, as well as Searchlight. Uh, late Thursday morning uh, through Friday afternoon in those areas, the heavy rain with the damp ground could yield a few flooding issues. So we'll be watching that potential again. That's late Thursday here in Las Vegas through Thursday night into Friday. Another round of heavier rain looking likely. Now, 70s tomorrow before that rain sets in. 
60s though with the rain lingering Friday. Here's a little bit of good news. We'll try to keep it dry this weekend. A tad breezy Saturday, Sunday in the upper 60s. Now, Marissa, next Tuesday is St. Patrick's Day. We could see another round of widespread rain late Monday through Tuesday. Yeah, no flooding on the roads this morning, but I am seeing our biggest issues this morning on the ramps. That's going to be because the roads are still a little bit slick because of those showers. Keeping my eye on that crash at Blue Diamond. This is the on ramp to get onto the 15 South. Just a slight slowdown there. It appears this crash does involve that semi truck right there pushed over to the right as much as it can be. But again, just blocking one lane there as cars trying to make their way onto the freeway. Don't forget Con Expo this week. You can expect some heavy traffic right around the convention center. And this is on top of all the construction already going on in that area. There has been overnight work on Las Vegas Boulevard, but crews are going to open up an extra lane for you in each direction right there. So hopefully that will alleviate some of the traffic headed to the convention center. Taking a look at our drive times through the resort corridor. Average speed 63 miles an hour headed south. And Marissa, thank you so much. Pushing through the pain together, a local CrossFit gym is giving hope and motivation to veterans and first responders with disabilities. On this week's Veterans Voice, 13 Action News reporter Leah Pazetti shows you the community these heroes have built. Behind every one of these people is a story. Push jerk or split jerk? It's up to you. Most with a patriotic theme like Rory. I was in the 82nd Airborne Division, so basically I jumped out of planes. Almost every one of them had an unexpected turn in life, like John. I came to the realization a year ago that if I didn't do something, I was going to end up in a wheelchair real soon. He had a stroke, and rather than give up, he came here. I'm much healthier than I was a year ago. Much healthier. Branded One CrossFit is free for any veteran or first responder. They really need a new community to join. And that's what I feel like is lacking when they get out of the military. They kind of feel lost. And I wanted to be able to give them a place they could come to and count on. Founder Nick McCombs says this community is building strength together. It doesn't matter what your disability rating is, uh, how disabled you think you are physically or mentally, I can put you through a workout just like all my other members. Some of their injuries came after service, like Jimmy. I lost my leg at the scene, I broke my right arm, tore open my stomach, punctured my liver and my kidney. He was in a motorcycle crash that almost took his life. Before I got my prosthetic leg, uh, I was stuck in a wheelchair for about like eight months. And you can see how far he's come, along with John. I'm adding years to my life and life to my years. With every simple exercise, they're gaining physical strength and confidence. Just like, you know, basic training almost. Like you're all sitting there and you're all enjoying the suck together. <laughs> Encouraging each other every step of the way. So let's build slowly. Leah Pizzetti, 13 Action News. What a great story there. Veterans Voice is sponsored by Lexus of Las Vegas and Lexus of Henderson. And if you have a veteran who you think should be featured on our weekly series about our heroes, email veteransvoice at ktnv.com. The time now is 619. Dealing with the hand sanitizer shortage. Well, there's a simple answer for those who just can't seem to find it in stores. And will the coronavirus impact the NFL draft? Who the LVCVA says will make the final call. You're watching Good Morning Las Vegas. We'll be right back on this Wednesday morning. Welcome back. This all caught on camera here. Take a look at just how dangerous fentanyl can be. Here you can see an Oklahoma sergeant wearing protective gloves there and packing up drug evidence laced with fentanyl when he starts to collapse. Seconds later, other officers come in and rescue him. Now they had to give him Narcan, which is a life saving drug that reverses the effects of an overdose. Really fortunate that uh, one, we had this available to us and two, that our officers um, really adhere to the training. This is really scary video. Police say this was the first time they had to give one of their own officers Narcan. Another officer who was possibly exposed to fentanyl was sent to the hospital. The department says both are doing okay. All right, the time now is 623. We are keeping our fingers crossed because so far next month's NFL draft is still on. The president of the Las Vegas Visitors and Convention Authority says plans for the draft have not changed because of the concerns surrounding the coronavirus. Yes, yeah, Steve Hill says the LVCVA is having twice daily conference calls with the Southern Nevada Health District to monitor the situation. And he says they will rely on the district and the NFL to make necessary decisions. 
And we're very hopeful that uh, this will move forward. Um, they're committed to doing everything they can to make it work. Uh, but what we have all said and all mean is um, health and safety of our employees, our guests comes first. Just last week, the NFL said it was closely monitoring news from the CDC, but plans for the draft in Las Vegas were still a go. And remember, we are your home for the 2020 NFL Draft. ABC will air three days of the big event. Round one starts on Thursday, April 23rd at 5.30 p.m. I, for one, cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, Coachella has been postponed due to coronavirus concerns. The annual music festival was set to be held in Indio, California over two weekends from April 9th through April 19th, but now Coachella will take place the weekends of October 9th and October 16th. Now we have reached out to organizers of EDC to see if they're considering a postponement there. We have yet to hear back. All right, well, here's your chance to have the best Airbnb on the block. A new contest is giving away $100,000 to build your own Airbnb. It's a lot of money. Go to Airbnb.com and enter to win there. And you have until uh, April 15th to apply. And the contest isn't just for Americans. Other countries can also submit applications. And we wish you all good luck. I've been to some good ones, some bad ones. There's, you know. My mom actually just asked me about the Airbnb that I stayed in when I visited my brother in Hawaii. Yeah. So, hey, we're hey. all Airbnb users here. Yes, Justin we are. Bruce, what about you, bud? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of some of the like less interesting places that I've used an Airbnb or a, a Verbo, a VRBO. Gosh, I feel like uh, somewhere outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Still kind of exciting though. Uh, we are looking at the chance of a few additional scattered rain showers in our super seven day planner. Uh, a little bit of mist out there. Also lots of clouds for the kiddos waiting at the bus stop and temperatures outside are in the low to mid 50. So they will need that heavy sweatshirt or perhaps even the coat. And the good news is that tomorrow uh, we're dry during the morning and the early afternoon. So we'll sneak up to 72. Not bad for a Thursday, but got to give you a first alert. It's an unfortunate one that another round of some heavier showers will push in late Thursday around dinner time through Thursday night and actually won't taper until Friday in the morning. We may see a half inch to possibly an inch of rain late Thursday, Thursday night into Friday. If we get that much rain to fall, we'll likely have some street flooding here in Las Vegas late Thursday, Thursday night into Friday. The weekend will try to keep it dry, but it will be breezy and in the 60s on Saturday, Sunday. Guys, it was about five o'clock this morning before I realized, hey, St. Patrick's Day is on the super seven day planner. Yeah, Tuesday. It looks chilly. We're talking temperatures in the 50s with likely rain on the 17th next week. Cool. All right, Justin, thank you so much. The time now is 626. The number of coronavirus cases growing in the U.S. This morning, a new warning from one of the country's leading experts on infectious disease. And a grandma slammed to the ground by officers. What police say led to this. Arming yourself with knowledge. A couple of free self-defense training sessions just for women are happening this week. I'll have details on where to find them coming up. Just enough showers out there this morning to make your morning commute a little bit wet and slick. Take it easy out there. Give yourself some extra time as you're heading out the door. You're going to need it this morning. 13 Action News. Good morning, Las Vegas. It is a first alert action day. Justin Bruce will have more on how the rain could affect your weekend plans. Back off. Let's get away from me. Back off. Protecting yourself from danger. How you can learn ways to fight off a possible threat for free. And protecting yourself from germs. All new at 6. Dr. Germ shows you how you can protect yourself from things you touch every single day. Good morning, Las Vegas. Thank you so much for joining us on this gloomy Wednesday. Yeah. I'm Kalina Estrino. And I'm Jackie Kostick. I, for one, actually kind of like the rain. I like the, the change, rain, for so, sure. So, <laughs> you know what, we'll take it. As long as you're safe on the roads. Yeah, uh, Yeah, and, and the roads aren't as bad this morning as they were yesterday morning. That's a general consensus. It's so sunny so often here in Las Vegas. I'm sure it'll be 105, 110 <laughs> before we know it. We kind of don't mind these gloomy, cool days. A little damp out there, and we're still watching the potential for a few additional 
additional light showers like what we've got going on down around sunset and the 215 and the 95 down in that part of Green Valley between Gibson and Stephanie. So still a few raindrops, but generally around the valley, it's just kind of cloudy and gloomy. And the heavy rain that many of us were dealing with last night that has shifted off to the east through Arizona and it's moving into Utah, so nothing worse than a few additional light showers this Wednesday morning. As we head from midday into the afternoon, we'll probably see a few peaks of blue sky through the clouds, but we still run the risk. It's a slim chance, but I can't rule it out of an additional shower as the day wears on. Not a washout though. 50s now, mid 60s later on this afternoon. I say that with enthusiasm because it was in the upper 50s all afternoon yesterday. 67 should feel a little bit better. Marissa, we have got another round of heavy rain tomorrow. We'll time it out for you next. All right, Justin, thank you so much. Couple crashes to let you know about now. Up on the northwest side of town, you're seeing a crash uh, at Grand Montecito and Deer Springs. Also in downtown, a crash at Stewart and Las Vegas Boulevard. Our photographer Daryl is in live drive for us this morning. He's headed to the scene right now. I'm going to check it out because I am seen a little bit of slowdown in that area, so we'll, I'll keep you updated in the next few minutes. An update for you on that crash at Blue Diamond on ramp to get onto the 15 South. That crash has now all cleared and taking a look at our drive times through the resort corridor. Average speed 61 miles an hour headed south. All right, Marissa, thank you. This week, women will have a few opportunities to arm themselves with self-defense knowledge, and it's all for free. Yep, Metro Police is hosting a women's safety training today at their Summerlin Area and Command Center. 13 Action News reporter Kelsey McFarlane is live to explain what you'll learn today. Kelsey. Ladies, good morning. If you'd like to arm yourselves with a bit more than the pepper spray on your keychain, Metro will be hosting that free safety training today from 10 a.m. from noontime here at their Summerlin Command Center. But if you'd like to double down on that, get physical and learn how to physically fend off any sort of threat, Krav, or excuse me, Nomad, Nomad Krav Maga taught us a few tricks. Tammy Jones has been a Krav Maga student for two years. I said back off. I said get away from me! Back off! She says two years ago she wasn't equipped to defend herself or her loved ones in a dangerous situation. Krav Maga has changed that. I feel a lot safer. I feel a lot more confident being out in the world. Um, I feel more confident about protecting those that I work with that I go places with, that I care about. One. Shannon Langwell One. is chief instructor at Nomad Krav Maga. It's a mixed martial art, but for self-defense. So you're going to learn how to do your striking, your hammer fists, your knees, your punches, your groin kicks. In a Krav Maga training session, you'll learn self-defense and get a workout as an added benefit. Our ultimate goal with Krav Maga is to end a fight as quickly as possible if that fight comes to us and we're unable to de-escalate. Langwell teaches situational awareness skills and how to create verbal and physical boundaries. But if de-escalation fails, <laughs> you'll also know how to throw a punch. <laughs> Nomad Krav Maga is hosting a free women's only self-defense class on Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. You're going to learn some simple basic techniques that could really be highly effective in protecting yourself or your loved ones if that uh, attacker ever comes to you. Now, for anyone who is interested in going to Nomad Krav Maga on Saturday, it's for women 15 and up. You'll want to show up with a bottle of water and be ready to work out with your workout gear. Now, if you want to go to today's training session, that's right here again at the Summerlin Command Center for Metro from 10 a.m. to noon. We'll post more information on our website, ktnv.com. For now, reporting live, I'm Kelsey McFarland, 13 Action News. Kelsey, thank you so much. You know, it is always so important to know how to defend yourself and to make sure you're safe. Yeah, exactly in case you need it. You don't want to have to need it, but you want to be prepared if you if you do encounter something like yeah. that. So thanks, Kelsey. The number of coronavirus cases in the United States has reached 1,000. The number of patients has doubled since Sunday, and 31 people have died in the U.S. Here in Nevada, the CDC has officially confirmed a case in Washoe County. Now, we're still waiting for the CDC to sign off on three other presumptive positive cases, including two here in Clark County. And this morning, a new warning from one of the country's leading experts on infectious disease. We can't be doing the kinds of things we were doing a few months ago. You have to start taking seriously what you can do now that if and when the infections will come, and they will come, sorry to say, sad to say, 
they will. Health experts say cases will continue to increase, but the risk to the nation is still relatively low. Older people and people with chronic illnesses are at higher risk. Today, President Trump will meet with top Wall Street executives at the White House amid concerns surrounding the coronavirus. Now, earlier this week, President Trump asked Congress for a tax cut and other measures to ease the pain of the outbreak. Now, that did help stocks recoup most of their historic losses from Monday. You remember that. Committees in both the House and Senate will have hearings today on preparedness and response to the virus. As hand sanitizer and other cleaning products continue to sell fast, one clinical toxicologist is offering an alternative. So if you can't find hand sanitizer, it is possible to make your own. Rubbing alcohol and aloe vera are the next best thing, but there are some things that you want to stay away from. I've seen a few recipes online that recommend using vinegar, bleach, um, disinfectants, both powder and liquid, fingernail polish removers, hydrogen peroxide, all of these things can be super dangerous, irritating to the skin. Now, the toxicologist says above all, soap and water work the best. And we'll have more coronavirus coverage throughout our morning and, our, and on our website at KTNV.com. There you will find up-to-the-minute updates as well as safety tips and scams to watch out for.